Hi there, and let's get to it. So we've already looked at creating users and familiarized ourselves with the project manager. Now let's take a look at the interface of DaVinci Resolve 12 itself. The first thing to keep in mind is that the program is divided into four workspaces called pages. You've got your media page, your edit page, color page, and deliver page, all accessible using the icons at the bottom of the program. They're laid out in the order that you are anticipated to carry out your workflow. I will very quickly go over their functions, but there will be dedicated videos for each page and all its respective panels coming up shortly. So first is the media page. This is your primary interface for media management. Here you'll be able to access your files on your computer and import them into the media pool, which is then shared across to the edit page. The media page is also where you'll be organizing and labeling your footage, inputting its metadata, and syncing the audio. The edit page acts like a classic NLE software. You've got a source and record monitor at the top. You've got a timeline underneath that has an accommodating toolbar over it. There's also an effects library and an inspector that will give you transform controls over each individual clip, including things like position, scale, rotation, and time remapping. The color page is arguably what most of you are interested in. This is the page that will enable you to color grade and composite your clips. There's several timeline navigations in the middle of the page, a viewer on top that shows you your final output, on the left-hand side you've got a gallery that will store all of your stills or grades, on the right-hand side, you've got your node editor, which will allow you to composite your grades in a much more sophisticated way. And at the bottom is a wide variety of color grading tools. Lastly, you've got the deliver page. This is where you'll be able to get your project out as a self-contained video file or even output it onto tape. The format window on the left-hand side allows you to set up your render settings with full control over the codecs and resolutions used. The viewer will demonstrate exactly what's going to be output. The timeline at the bottom allows you to identify where you want the export to begin and end. And the render queue, as the name implies, is where all of your jobs will be listed in preparation for the render. So let's take a look at the amount of customization that DaVinci Resolve 12 allows you. For one, the panels do allow for more resizing options, so you can grab the edge of a panel and expand or contract the size to customize your workspace. Additionally, each page has an interface toolbar at the top. This allows you to reveal new panels that were not previously visible, or to hide panels that you're not currently using. To reset any changes that you've made to the panels, you can simply click on Workspace, Layout, and Reset UI Layout. Whenever you right-click on an element in a panel, you'll find what's known as a contextual menu. Notice how different panels and different elements give you different options. This is the beauty of contextual menus. They allow for a wide variety of additional controls while keeping the interface tidy. In the top left and the top right-hand side of most panels, you will find drop-down menus that give you further controls of the appearance of the panels or their functionality. Lastly, let's take a look at how you can change values inside of the interface. Most values can be amended simply by clicking and dragging. Double click to reset. There's an additional reset button in the top right of most panels. To change a value that's written numerically, hover your mouse over the numbers until you see a double arrow icon. Click and drag to the left or right to change the value. You can also just click to highlight the value in orange and type in a new value. To reset the value, double click its name. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.